Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and tonight I'm here on my Amiga 2000 computer, and I wanted to show you guys this program right here. Um, Track Saver GUI version 2, it's a really nice program that is used for creating the ADF images from real Amiga disks. <clears throat> you can also use the program for taking an ADF file and then using that file to recreate the original Amiga disk. And so um, that's what we're going to do tonight. First thing we want to do is we want to um, format a disk. Make sure that your disk that you're using is not a high density disk. I don't care if you cover up this hole. Do not use a high density disk. You want to use a uh, double sided, double density disk, and make sure it's a high quality name brand disk. Do not use generic disks. Okay, so we'll insert the disk into DF0, okay, <clears throat> and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to format the disk, okay, and I'll just leave it at empty, uncheck trash can, do not do a quick format. Do a full format. And it shouldn't take that long. Now what's interesting with Magic Workbench is that a disk that's not formatted, it won't have a label right there. But once the disk is formatted, it'll actually put a label on the disk, which I think is, I think is pretty cool. <laughs> I love Magic Workbench. It's my favorite workbench because it, it looks very artistic. I just love Magic Workbench. I mean, I also have used, you know, Workbench 3.9, and it too is a beautiful workbench. But for some reason, I've always preferred Magic Workbench. It's just so artistic, so beautiful. Yeah, as you can see, it doesn't take that long. Format a disk. Doesn't take that long. I'm hoping that the camera picks up the monitor good and that it's not overly bright, you know? I'm using a, uh, an Amiga RGB to HDMI board that I have plugged into the video slot of my Amiga 2000. As you can see, it's a really clear picture. Really clear picture. Really clear picture. I'm really impressed with this board. This RGB to, to HDMI board. It's really nice. Okay, so now that the disc is formatted, and you see it put a label on the disc. <laughs> I like to verify that I like to check the disk for errors before I copy important information over to that disk. For that, I go down here and I use Xcopy Professional. It's a German program. And um, my disk is in drive zero. So I just go over here and I check disk. It doesn't take long. You should see all green zeros. Now that red 2 came up. When it does that, that means I'll recheck the disk. See, I don't like that. 
but I'll recheck the desk. Should be all zeros, all green zeros on both sides. Okay, I'm going to recheck it just to make sure. Because the program that I'm putting on here is a very important program. It's Audio Master, Aegis Audio Master 3, which is a really nice uh, audio editing program. And I'm going to show you guys how to use that program in future videos. Yep, I didn't see the red twos come up, so, okay, it's fine. Might have been some kind of a quirk or something. Yeah, the desk is fine. And then I exit out of that program. And then, I load up um, TrackSaver GUI version 2. I think you can download this off AmyNet. Yeah, AmyNet. Track Saver GUI version 2. That's what I'm using. And, okay, we're, you can do disk to file. That's if you want to create an ADF. Or you can do file to disk. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay. So, first thing we want to do, we want to set it up. So, I want to select my ADF file. We'll go to Volumes. I believe that's on my uh, it's DH1, my storage part of my hard drive. Um, uh, I went too far. It's this one right here. Aegis Audio Master 3 ADF. Select. Okay, that's the file that we want to convert back to an original Amiga disk. Now we select the disk that we want that to go to. So in this case it's DF0. Um, I usually have Verify on. Um, I know it, it slows it down, but it verifies, okay, what was read is what was written. That's how that works. And for an important program like this, I want to make sure that the disk is written properly. All right, we're not using compression. That's usually turned off. Format while writing, that doesn't need to be done because I already formatted the disk, and I checked it with Xcopy. All right, and then after you have that set up, you just click File to Disk. And, okay, all data that is already on the disk will be discarded. That's okay. And it's just that easy, boys and girls. Just that easy. I just love this little graph thing up here. Elapsed time, remaining time. Yeah, as we can see here, it's going to take less than three minutes. That's actually pretty fast. Because I can remember uh, in the, during the Commodore 64 days, back when I was copying discs on my Commodore 64 computers, I used to go to the copy parties, would have pizza and beer, or whatever, soda pop, whatever, you know. I would have uh, everyone would bring their Commodore 64 computers and uh, their disc drives. And uh, I remember it took like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes just to copy one disc. Oh my god, man. So for a six hour copy party at the pizza, a uh, local pizza parlor, you know, in a six hour time period, we might have went home with maybe 10 discs, 10 or 12 new discs. <laughs> maybe if that. And that's only if, you know, you had more than one person copying discs for you. But now, with the Amiga computer, I'm just spoiled. So I can copy an entire disk, or create an entire disk in like, hell, less than three minutes. So, yeah. Now we had Amiga copy, 
parties too. Disc copy parties for the Amiga as well, as well as the Atari ST, PC. I remember going to all these different copy parties, local pizza joints, you know. <laughs> Those were fun times. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, this goes pretty quick. Because it's not only creating the disc, it's also verifying what it has read. I mean, it verifies what it's read to what it has written to make sure they match. So, yeah. It's just that easy, boys and ghouls. Just that easy. And so now I exit the yeah I exit the program and there it is Aegis well Audio Master three the reason why the icon looks weird because this program is meant to be run on Kickstart Workbench one point three and so most Amiga software is they're actually programmed to run the best on Kickstart Workbench one point three. And that's the reason why my main Amiga 2000 computers, they actually have Kickstart Workbench 1.3. And you'll see me using those computers quite a bit in future videos. Okay, so now after making that disc, I go back down here to Xcopy. Yes, you guessed it. Okay, uncheck that. And then I recheck that disc. Make sure that there's no errors on that disc, because this is a very important disc. Aegis Audio Master 3. Love this audio uh, manipulating program, audio processing program for the Amiga. It works really well if you got like a, a sound digitizer, audio digitizer, and you need to, you know, work with those sound files, you know, before using them in your animations or in your videos or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay. Looks like this disc is good. And then I'll put a label on it, and it's done. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this video. Um, yeah, I just want to show you guys how to use this program right here. Um, Tracksaver GUI version 2. It's a really nice program and you can download it. I believe I downloaded this off of AmyNet. Tracksaver GUI version 2. Anyway, that's it for this video. I just thought I'd do a quick video. I was on my Amiga 2000 tonight and I was creating this disc and I thought, well, why don't I just hook up the camera and you guys get to watch me do this. So anyway, my name is Hans George Campbell and until next time.